Hello, I am Mishra Kumar. I am the technical director at Trilobog Marine Systems. Over the past few years, we have conducted a lot of research into the manufacturing and testing of foam fenders with the objective of driving up quality standards across the marine industry. You may be viewing this webinar as you have previously read a new research report, Smarter Foam Theory, which discusses a number of issues related to foam fenders. If not, you can read the report here, but I will quickly recap the points covered. Foam fenders are still perceived to be a commodity product. A large part of this is due to the lack of standards to guide their specification, manufacturing and testing. The absence of a definitive protocol is leading many to think that they can be easily bought and deployed. Foam fenders are suitable for a number of applications, including the berthing of commercial vessels, oil and gas tankers, and especially in ship-to-ship -ship transfer. Their resilient foam field construction provides an unsinkable fender body that permits high energy absorption with relatively low reaction force. In terms of their recovery dynamics, the behavior of foam fenders is different to that of solid fenders or pneumatic fenders. A foam fender's rate of recovery is independent to the density of the foam. Foams do not recover completely after compression to their original thickness. In fact, final recovery varies with the deformation. One can expect a low energy impact to almost recover to the original thickness. Piank currently provides guidelines only on rubber and pneumatic fenders. Given the distinctive nature of foam, it's time the industry had some robust protocols in place to manage their manufacturing, testing and use. According to Trelleborg's latest research, it is extremely clear that foam fenders testing and reporting procedures need serious review. The purpose of this webinar is to give some more details on research undertaken by Trelleborg into the characteristics of foam and explain what the tests found. I will then take you through new tests proposed by Trelleborg. The aim is to give specifiers a robust and standardized way to measure the quality and performance of any foam fenders they procure. Here's what we did. Trilobog undertook a series of compression tests on foam fenders using low, standard, high and super high density foam core. The size of the fender selected for the testing was 1 meter diameter by 1.5 meter length. The first two fenders were identical in nature, produced from standard density foam. Fender number 2685 was produced using low density foam and fender number 2686 was built using super high density foam. All these fenders had been compressed in a hydraulic press fitted with a calibrated pressure transducer to measure the load and a linear transducer to measure the deflection. Fenders had been compressed to 70% of their original diameter. Compression speed was set between 2 to 8 cm per minute. All the testings were conducted in constant velocity or CV mode. Fender temperature was checked during testing and observed to be within 23 plus minus 5 degree centigrade. Fender's diameter was measured before and after every compression. The testing plan of these fenders are shown on screen now. Test results are tabulated and compared at 60%, 65% and 70% compressions. Fender's reaction force, energy absorption capacity, efficiency and recovery after compressions had been compared. There are some basic parameters to set out clearly. The performance of a fender is defined by its energy absorption capacity as well as the corresponding reaction force generated during compression. The energy absorption capacity of a fender is calculated by the area under the force displacement curve. Fender efficiency is defined by the ratio of energy and reaction force at rated deflection and is expressed by the term E over R. The test showed that the first compression is not an accurate measure of true fender performance. Instead, 
performance after 24 hours is a more reliable reflection. Trelleborg observed that for a foam fender, the first compression value is high, erratic, and non-sustainable. Therefore, foam fenders need more than three compressions and to rest for more than 24 hours to get stabilized to produce uniform performance data. It was also observed that subsequent and frequent compressions reduce the performance of a fender. However, with sufficient resting time, fender performance improves and returns to the level of the second compression. Current industry practice is reporting performance data at 60% deflection of the diameter of the fender by a mere 5% increase in compression from 60% to 65%, we can see a jump of 23% to 27% in energy absorption capacity. The drop in efficiency is negligible at 65% compression in comparison to the gain in energy absorption capacity. This can be seen on screen now. In contrast, the efficiency of the fenders at 70% compression is lower than efficiency at 65% compression. Therefore, we suggest 60 to 65% compression should be considered as optimal to get the best performance out of a foam fender. The industry standard is to maintain a 95% recovery of the fender height after compression to achieve a consistent standoff which is the distance between the fender and the jetty. It was observed from the experiments that the instantaneous recovery of the fender's height after seven days was satisfactory. Standard density and super high density fenders were selected for the repetitive compression study. They were compressed to 60% of their diameter between 2 to 8 cm per minute constant velocity speed. Compressions were carried out once every hour for seven days. In that time, each fender went through 168 compression cycles. The following observations had been made from the repetitive compression tests. The drop in reaction force from the first to the 150th cycle was around 13%. The drop in height from the first to the 150th cycle was approximately 3 to 5 percent. Based on the various experimental data, we propose the test protocol for performance determination for the manufacturers. Performance testing should be carried out using CV or constant slow 2 to 8 cm per minute velocity method in order to establish standardized performance data which should be published in the manufacturer's catalog. A full-size fender or an equivalent model fender should be compressed four times successively and rested for 24 hours. The fender should then be compressed once to establish initial performance. Velocity factors need to be established by testing scale model samples and rated performance data needs to be calculated by multiplying the initial performance with the velocity factor. We also propose the following quality control test protocol for the buyers. Temperature for the fenders to be tested should be stabilized at 23 plus minus 5 degree centigrade for at least 48 hours before conducting any test. Please note that bigger sized fenders may need longer time for temperature stabilization. Breaking the test fender by compressing only one time at 60% or 65% of its original height at 2 to 8 cm per minute CV speed. Deflect the test fender once at constant slow 2 to 8 cm per minute speed. A fender provides required performance if it meets 90% of the energy before exceeding 110% of the reaction force at any point during the second compression. If the RPD performance is considered as the passing criteria, second compression test data needs to be corrected by velocity factor and temperature factor. 
we need to ensure that the fender meets 90% of the energy before exceeding 110% of reaction force. We strongly suggest testing of at least one fender from the order quantity using performance determination protocol and testing of 10% of quantity using quality control test protocol. For more information on the suggested new test protocols and to see how they can be specifically applied within your specifications, you can ask for Trellobox new foam fender test protocol. Thank you for your time and for watching this webinar.